Okay, sorry. Uh, hi, my name is Rona, and I'm a PhD student at an experimental biophysics lab uh, where we study biological systems under the supervision uh, of Professor Roy Beck, who is unfortunately not here. I work on a biological system called myelin, which is related to multiple sclerosis. So what is myelin? Myelin is a multi-lamellar uh, membrane uh, with a uh, different lipids and protein uh, with a cytoplasmic and extracellular phase, inner and outer membrane, which have different lipids and lipid stoichiometry composition in them. The protein, myelin basic protein, plays an important role in the myelin assembly and is believed to act as an intermembrane adhesion protein. The positively charged protein binds to the negatively charged lipids in the inner leaflets. Together, they uh, form a membrane which is wrapped around the axon in a spiral way like a rollad and are part of the nervous system. Myelin acts as an electrical insulator, speeding up nerve conduction and also nurtures the axon. Axon is the long slender projection of neuron that typically conducts electrical impulses away from the neuron cell's body. Its function is to transmit different information to different neurons and muscles. You can think of that as an electrical wire. In order to get good conduction, the wire should be insulated. Destruction of these insulator, these insulator layers results with electrical shortcuts. In our nervous system, the damage results with signal transmission malfunction with diverse sym symptoms determined by the function of the affected neuron. Uh, in neurological diseases like multiple sclerosis, uh, these insulator layers are destroyed. From in vivo experiments, we know that the lipid stoichiometry in the healthy composition and the diseased composition are different. And we try to answer the questions, what are the structural changes between the two extreme states and what govern these kind of interactions? And what will be the self-assembly of the lipids when we add myelin basic protein to the mix? So to do that, we use SACs, small angle X-ray scattering. And here you can see our in-house SACs, which I rarely use since I conduct all my experiments in synchrotron facilities. If you don't know SACs, all you need to remember is the basic principle. The scattering angle is inversely proportional to the repeated distance. The system is suitable for a solution, it's not destructive, it does not need any tagging and can provide information on scales, on scales ranging from 0.1 to 100 nanometers. We combine this method with cryogenic trans transmission electron microscopy as well. To prepare the samples, I mix all the lipids together in the desired ratio evaporate the liquid to end up with a lipid film. After swe swelling the film with the desired buffer solution so we can control the salt concentration and pH, add myelin basic protein, we get multilamellar vesicles and onion-shaped structures of lipid and protein complexes solution. I take small amount of the solution into quartz capillary centrifuge it and get it to get a nice looking pellet and then I take all these capillaries to a synchrotron facility. So our first experiment was on um, healthy and diseased lipid composition only without myelin basic protein. The scattering data clearly show distinguished correlation peaks that we can index to one lamella phase in the healthy composition, the red arrows, and coexistence of two phases in the diseased composition. Again, a lamella phase, uh, the black arrows, and inverted hexagonal phase, a honeycomb structure, which is denoted by the purple arrows. These, were, these phases were also noticeable in the cryotem, which was performed by our collaborator Maor from the Ishi uh, Talmon group at the Technion. So, uh, lipid, lipid stoichiometry has an effect on the structural self-assembly of the lipids, from healthy stack of lamellars to a diseased inverted hexagonal. Now what will be the self-assembly of these lipids when we add myelin basic protein? 
we find that addition of myelin basic protein compacts the membrane, but also it creates a dimer network only in, the, in between the plane of the membrane in the healthy composition, but not in the diseased composition. More importantly, addition of myelin basic protein results with flattening the membrane and abolishing the hexagonal phase in the disease state. Well, addition of charge enti entity into charge membrane results with membrane condensation. This is not new. Um, there is electrostatic interaction between the charge membrane to the, opposite, to the oppositely charged polyelectrolyte, hence the membrane condenses. This process occurs until charge neutrality, rho equals one. Myelin basic protein plays, um, acts as an electrostatic glue and condenses the membrane. The interlamellar spacing decreases until it reaches saturation. Although the cutoff, although the cutoff for the saturation should be adjusted to about half and not one. Um, <coughs> these results indicate that um, condensation persists only up to a fraction of complete charge neutrality and suggest that other intermolecular forces need to be taken into account, like protein-protein um, interaction and specific lipid-protein interactions. Let's go back to the cartoon of the axon. Can you see the membrane undulation in the disease myelin? Well, the literature is full with cartoons like the one that you see here. And you can see the membrane undulation in all of them. Phase transition from lamellar to hexagonal phase involves changes in membrane spontaneous curvature and results with membrane undulation, as you can see here. In vivo experiments reveal the same characteristics of membrane undulation in diseased mice specimens. Oops, and you can see it here. Um, okay, uh, these results suggest new um, mechanism for uh, disrupting lipid protein complexes and suggest new courses for diagnostics and treatment for a disease that are currently uh, does not have any cure or mechanism. Other than uh, lipids and protein, temperature and salt can also have an effect on the structure, on the self-assembly structures. Uh, preliminary results show that above 45 degrees Celsius, even the healthy composition results with phase transition uh, into two phases of lamellar and hexagonal phase, which was a characteristic of the disease state. Both the lamellar and hexagonal phases decrease with increasing the temperature. Increasing the monovalent salt concentration results with uh, membrane condensation for both lipid composition and for both uh, ion types. Uh, there is a critical concentration which is slightly different between the two salts ions and above it the lamella phase become more prominent and we can fit this decay to the DLVO theory um, which fits good to the uh, salt screening effect. Uh, what is uh, also notable, noticeable that uh, above uh, 200 millimolars in potassium chloride, again, the healthy composition ends up with a lamellar and hexagonal phase. Uh, change, when we change the divalent and salt concentration, uh, both lamellar and hexagonal phase uh, decrease with uh, increasing the concentration until a specific um, concentration. The, there is a different uh, critical concentration for each of the ions. Uh, and uh, after this concentration, there is a new, a new phase emerges, which is a dense phase. Um, Uh, and everything remains uh, stationary. Okay, so to summarize, 
we saw that uh, changing the lipid stoichiometry results with different self-assembly uh, from a healthy stack of lamellar to, to disease inverted hexagonal phase. Uh, addition of myelin basic protein results with, again, structural uh, changes um, and uh, changes in the organization of the protein within the bilayer of the membrane. Um, uh, these, uh, these phase transition results with um, changes in the membrane spontaneous curvatures uh, and uh, results with membrane undulation, which in vivo experiments reveal the same characteristics. And last but not least, we also saw that temperature and salt can affect the uh, um, phase transition from healthy lamellar to diseased inverted hexagonal. And with that, I would like to conclude by acknowledging the synchrotrons we had the pleasure to visit and measure it, thank the funding agencies, um, thank our collaborator, Maor uh, from the Ishi Talmon Group from the Technion, and Rina Aroni and Ruth Arnon from the Weizmann Institute. Uh, but most of all, I would like to thank my advisor, Roy, and my wonderful group members, and you for listening. Yes. Yes. So the phase runs, we know that um, lipids uh, affect the self assembly, which means that if we change lipids, we might affect the um, self assembly. There are specific lipids that enhance the hexagonal phase, and there are uh, specific lipids that abolish these phases. Maybe if we can feed the mice a specific lipid that flattens the membrane, it might help at abolishing the hexagonal phase, which might help the, I mean, the process to slow down. Or again, change salt concentration. And, well, you need to be below 45 degrees Celsius, but. Yes. Uh, no, uh, the amount of glycolipids in the um, uh, cytoplasmic membrane is uh, significantly lower than the other lipids that we worked on. But they have good yeah, <laughs> it might be. But then again, we need we need another experiment. Uh, and we need more <laughs> experiments with because this is. Only one protein and not several, which has, again, which is uh, in the biological system and glycolipids as well. Yeah, we think it's specific binding to lipids. So in order to make phase transition, we think that it, there is a separation of lipids into a lamella phase and some lipids go into the hexagonal phase. There is a specific binding for, of the protein to a specific lipid uh, that makes this kind of uh, formation. <laughs> 